Okay, so today we're going to be testing some relays. Car won't start. One of the cheapest and easiest things you can do first is check the starter relay just to make sure it's working. The only thing you need is a multimeter, optionally some alligator clips. You might have an easier time with those. So locate the fuse box under the engine here. Let's take the lid off. Underneath the lid it sometimes tells you where the relays are. You can see down here it says relay uh, various numbers, but you'll need a manual to find out which one or which relay you want to test. On here the starter relay is this one, so we're going to pull this relay out and test it for voltage and also, well, apply a voltage to it and test it for resistance. A good little tip here, if you have the same relay, you can see here we have uh, three relays exactly the same. You can just switch one with the other, I believe this one's for the fog lights, this one's for the starter. Just switch them over, then uh, if it still won't start, you know your fog lights work, you know the, the relay is fine and it's another problem. So that's a good way of uh, checking first. Now when you take the relay out, they'll almost always have a diagram on the side here, which shows you the pin numbers. And underneath you have the corresponding pin numbers uh, next to the pins, so there's no way you can really confuse this and get it wrong. Generally, I mean all relays could be different, but generally, pin 85 is the ground, so the negative, 86 the power, the positive, and uh, pin 30 is the constant power supply to whatever is being activated by the relay, and 87 is the output of pin 30 when it gets switched on. So before testing the relay, it's good to just probe these uh, points here um, with a multimeter, just DC volts, just to make sure you're actually getting 12 volts to the relay. So think of a relay as an electrically operated switch, like a remote switch which is turned on by the circuit itself and not necessarily a human. So the starter mo motor on the car will draw you know, upwards of 200 amps. So what you would have to do without a relay is run that 200 amp sort of supported cable all the way to the ignition switch and you know that's not only a waste of wire but it could potentially be quite unsafe. So what we do we just um, uh, power the relay with a small sort of electrical circuit and then the relay will actually open that circuit you know for the big draw on the, uh, from the starter and that will actually complete the start, uh, circuit and allow the uh, sort of engine to turn over from the starter. So this is why this can be a circuit breaker for actually starting the car, so it's something we can look at first. So let's have a look how we can uh, activate this relay. So I've just used some cables here to connect to the car battery. You can actually use a 9 volt square battery, it fits almost perfectly across the terminals here, but you know this is just easier for me because I don't have a square battery right now. So just connect the negative one here to uh, pin 85, and that's the ground. And as soon as we connect the positive there, it's going to make a little clicking sound. So you can see that right now. So every mechanical relay, such as this one, has a small electromagnet inside. And when it's energized, so from here, it's energized by 12 volts here, and that pulls the internal switch contacts together. It makes an audible kind of clicking sound. You can actually feel the contacts open and close if you just place your finger on the relay. So that's what the clicking sound is. But it doesn't necessarily mean the relay is fully working. To do that, with the uh, power connected, we test the resistance from the other two pins. So I've connected two more alligator clips here to the multimeter probes. I've connected the uh, multimeter probes to pin 30 and 87 and we want to check for resistance. So this is what it will look like if your relay is dead. And with everything connected you can see we're measuring a small amount of resistance which indicates a good relay. Now if you have a fuse box with the same relays you can check the readings on those to make sure they're the same and that way you know all your relays are working. And you can see here, with both power terminals disconnected, you can see the relay measures no resistance. So you can see it requires the power in order to for that to work, which is the job of a relay. So I hope that you found this useful uh, in testing relays. And again, you don't need much equipment, so uh, I hope this helped you.